Region C Athletic Complex, the Auraria Event Center, the homes for Roadrunners Athletics. While it has been the coaches and the athletes and the play on the field that has put MSU Denver on the NCAA map, it is these two facilities that keeps everyone coming back. In fact, both locations have hosted Division II national championships. Puts us on the map, I think in Denver, you know. Uh, I think that's a big deal. That's one of the biggest struggles that we have is to carve out a piece of the athletic landscape. And the, you know, you, we have every major pro team here. You know, you up the road, you have CU and CSU, um, and let alone the other RMAC schools. So, but this has been a landmark. The Regency Athletic Complex was built on the vision of former MSU Denver President Stephen Jordan, along with former Athletic Director Joe McDermott at the helm, and the great support of Rob Cohen and the Board of Trustees. Two, three. Road, road, road. There we go. There we go. <laughs> they all imagined a space where our softball, baseball, tennis, and soccer teams could call their own and compete at a high level. It's been a huge game changer for our own players, you know, I, well, that year that we transitioned over and to see the difference in pride of playing at home and the excitement level of playing at home, you know, that's, that, that means a lot also. Softball head coach Annie Van Wettinga was a part of both the old Auraria field and the new complex. She understands how much of an impact the new field has made on her program. It's the first place we, we bring a recruit, you know, we always have them meet us here. Um, it's a game changer, you know, and especially someone who's been here long enough. You know, I spent time at the old field. We, we kind of had to build a field to play. Um, we had to put up the outfield fence and the foul, the left and right field foul line fences. We had to build a bullpen. Um, there was no locker room. There was no storage, um, any of that stuff. Sometimes girls were changing clothes in their cars before coming to practice and so that sort of thing. These facilities have done wonders in the race for recruiting from their location to downtown Denver, to the sleek locker rooms, to the new seating for their friends and families, it's an eye-opener for recruits deciding on where they want to spend the next few years of their collegiate experience. Everything changed. The kids that, that were interested in us changed. You know, we, we had an advantage with this place with the rental side of it too, because if you pinpointed and got the right teams out here to play, you're getting them on campus while they were playing and you're able to you know, show your field off, then you see a kid you like, and then you can call them and be like, hey, you remember that really nice field you just played at? You know, that's our home. You know, are you interested in coming down and checking out campus and that sort of thing? So, yeah, it's night and day difference. Maintaining these facilities might seem to be a battle in its own, but in fact, facilities like these bring in outside programs who may need a place to hold their events. What I think is the most, one of the most unique things about this facility is, is it self-funds itself. So operationally, um, through the rentals and the different organizations that come in and use it, um, we can generate enough funds that that becomes my budget. And then the way we've been able to connect to the community and some of the community events like Big Brothers and Big Sisters and doing some of those things out here, um, that part of it's been really neat too because it opens a lot of people's eyes up to our campus. For coaches and for athletes, they are always looking to fine tune their program and their skills. The administration is doing the same thing with these facilities and are always looking to make improvements. You know, Joan McDermott left it better than she found it, you know, but, but yes, that's, that's your goal and that's my goal now um, when you look at this. Well, what else can we do? What else, you know, you know, at one point we painted everything inside and hung logos and, and did all of that. We changed our padding out here. You know, we put in new, new, uh, new seats in the PE event center, we got visiting team locker rooms and officials locker rooms and, and there's still more plans of things that we want to do. The fields, the courts, the jumbotron, everyone has seen those exquisite sights, but what doesn't get seen is the remodeled locker rooms and the impressive weight room that makes an incredible difference in the student athlete experience. I actually believe the biggest difference was the weight room in the locker rooms. Um, getting a truly athletically driven weight room was, a, was humongous, um, how Isaiah has that set up and, and the equipment that's in there is in there to build athletes. Um, and then the locker room, I mean, team chemistry is built inside locker rooms. I mean, that is where team chemistry comes from. It's where the athletes get to hang out, they just get to be themselves, the coaches aren't around. Us personally, in our, or in our locker room, you know, we have a pretty good history in our 
program. So we've used some of our funds to put up some of the past um, successes, both team and individual within our program and then continue to put branding up there. Just so create that pride, create that um, feeling of home uh, for our student athletes. The fans and the student athletes aren't the only ones impressed. It has also caught the eye of our professional sports neighbors. The Denver Nuggets and the Colorado Rockies have used our facilities to hold workouts and practices. I think that tells you what our facility is. Um, you know, the Nuggets do a lot of, uh, of their off-season conditioning and training out here. Um, and then when the Rockies approached us, that was a, that was a really, a really neat par partnership with them. They're, uh, they're a first-class organization. Um, and they've been out here since, you know, since the you know, second spring training started and they're going to use it all the way till their season's done. And I think there's a group of us that have been here long enough that have seen both sides and, and yeah, it's, it's, it's nice to come out and, and uh, have this type of facility to come work at every single day. It, I mean, facilities are king and when you have have a top-notch facility, it, it'll, you know, it allows you to feel that way and allows you to, to operate at a very high level. Hey. Next time on Road Runners Legends, we take a look back on the Metro State career of men's soccer great Stephen Emery. Being in that world of, you know, doing what you love for a living was, was so weird because you know, I had friends leaving college and going to work for corporations and I'm just, I'm going to practice and, and playing and then I'm, you know, done for the day and you know, I was playing soccer for a living. It's such this weird world to be in, even though that's all I had been writing down, you know, on everything. I want to be a professional soccer player. And so I think the um, realization that it happened um, was pretty profound.